let's go. Drinks on Dusty, let's start the show. Drinks on Dusty, coming in hot, coming in to blow up the spot. Guess we picking what we be drinking. We don't know what Dusty is thinking. We are here to have a good time. See where the combo may just climb. Sit back, put your drinks up. Go on, y'all, fill up your cup. Drinks on Dusty, let's go. Come on, y'all, start the show. Oh no. All right, everybody, welcome to this newest episode of Drinks on Dusty. I am, of course, I'm your host, Dusty, you know, drinking, fucking doing yes. whatever, being the host. Yes. And today I have a fucking awesome guest. The coolest part about this guest is you are the like the one guest I haven't spent the most, like all my guests have been like college friends mostly or people from Kids Club that I've actually spent a lot of time with. Mm-hmm. Me and you actually don't haven't hung out all that much. Oh, so yeah, that's right. We have, like, we're friends and everything, but we, mm. we're not, like, as close. So everybody, yeah. Nick is a fucking actor. He is a drag queen. Correct mm. me if I say anything wrong with that. No. A drag I queen. It. And he's just a bomb-ass motherfucker. He used to teach kids. We know each other because we worked at the same place uh, teaching kids and shit. So Nick, Lewis, welcome to the fucking podcast, man. Hello. And well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming <laughs> on, man. Thank I you for having you me. Coming. I was so excited. I was like, I'm yes, glad. this is a podcast. I'm going to be with Dustin. And you're absolutely right. But I always thought we always had a connection. Even I did too, right? Hang out as much. Like every time we would be around each other, just be like, oh, hey, like we pick up where we left off, you know? Yes. And that so. was always cool because it would be like Nick's here. I'm like, yeah, Nick. And like, oh, Dustin, have you seen Nick a lot? I'm like, no, not really. But I fucking like him. Like, yeah, like those- it's just like we just we just we just vibe. We vibe. Those, those energies vibe, right? Yeah. So that so- was I was just talking to someone about this the other day, and it was like, mm-hmm. oh, Dustin, what are you really good at? I'm like, well, I tend to be good at picking up energies, and mm-hmm. yours is an energy I picked up, and I'm just yeah. like, this dude and I should be best friends for fucking ever. Right. So yeah, man. <laughs> well, this is the start. Let's go. This is the start. Now we <laughs> now you're on the podcast. It's gonna be fucking Thanks. great. And yeah. I am currently making your drink right now. Okay, kind of, cool, cool, cool. Kind of fucking, oh, I don't need to measure yeah. shit. No, I, just, measure I don't measure neither, though. <laughs> just, I just throw it in like a little potion. <laughs> like, Stir it up it, and it shake it. <laughs> <Yeah. done. laughs> All right, Nick. So real quick, let's start off with what are we drinking tonight? What are we drinking today? Okay, we are drinking what's called Witch's Brew. Witch's Brew. Witch's Brew. So it's a concoction I made. There you go. So I don't have cranberry juice. So oh, you don't have the when there's no cranberry juice, I call it paradise. <laughs> <laughs> so is this just a drink that you made up at a house party once? And then it's like, oh, this so, is this is it. <laughs> so I, I, t- I took bartending school oh, when you I did? was like 22. Yeah, for oh, like cool. a whole week. I went to bartending school because I want to be a bartender. I was like, oh, they make mad bread. I can do this. I'm <laughs> cute. Like, I can do this, you know? But school I'm cute. and I can bartending, make this work. right? <laughs> <laughs> like, school and bartending just didn't go together. So oh, I chose I guess, school yeah. over bartending. Yeah, but you're, you know, you have to do bartending at night and then you're taking and classes then during the day. In the and morning. It's just like, I'm going to be a zombie. I'm going to be yeah, fucked You're not going to be able to fucking do anything. Exactly. So I chose school because I'm just like, that would be, you know, I can always have these skills as a bartender and make drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, so I created one time for a house party. So I just started adding things together. So I just started calling Witch's Brew. But then I also have like little drinks on the side that I also make that it's like I put stuff together. So Paradise is one of them with just like mango juice and orange juice. But yes. when you add the cranberry juice, it's called Witch's Brew. And also, too, there's also fruits, fruit chunks inside of it that you let it sit overnight. Uh, and then that's how the potency of the drink would be. If you just make the mango juice, orange juice, and whatever, it's just paradise. That's it's it. just paradise. Okay, I gotcha. So this is kind of like jungle juice in the sense, right? Like it's almost, but it's not fucking as uh, strong, I would assume, right? Because jungle juice doesn't usually have fucking, uh, what's that alcohol? Everclear, right? Doesn't jungle juice usually have Everclear in it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and that shit's yeah, fucking... Yeah, this just has tequila, and sometimes I'll put a second one, like rum, and let it sit overnight, and so it's just wow. like that, you know, that fucked up drink. So you, um, but you can use whatever you want. Yeah, you told me to pick my favorite 
uh like liquor and i was thinking i was like should i dump a bottle of crown in this and i was too nervous to do that because i drink crown too fast as it fucking is yeah yeah <laughs> i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go with vodka because i was a little little fucking nervous about it but i was like if i drunk if like i already drink crown straight as it fucking is um but that's awesome i love that you yeah. you're you're kind of like me i used to do this in college and i was like a bartender when i was 19 back in mm-hmm. nebraska but like small nebraska oh, okay. like nebraska bar like hey do you want fucking beer do you want whiskey like what do you want um yeah. but i always loved in college i don't know if you were the same i just mickey mixing random ass mm-hmm. drinks just, so uh, yeah i would oh, the girls would come to my room because i had the fruitiest fucking drinks yeah because Fruity i just was like really good though they are right you. you can't they have catch up to you <laughs> they catch up to you real quick it's like oh this is easy i'm like yeah you've had 10 of them man because you think it's just juice and now Sucks. you're a drunken slob mm, exactly you're, you're wasted no yeah i used <laughs> yeah. to mix things all the time like different colors put some like soda to make it like bubbly you know yeah i bet yours were way more artistic than mine mine men no you probably had a little bit more understanding Shit. but cheers man i put it in this, i put yes. in this big ass beer cup to make a big a lot of it and yeah, then same here. <laughs> so you can see it and stuff but i can't wait to try it all right dude this might fucking kill me um <laughs> no no was, don't die don't die was, <laughs> hey dude i i did a i did the podcast that i'm releasing on my birthday on wednesday mm-hmm. when <gasps> i was the guest my birthday is on wednesday a capricorn yeah. capricorn that's right yes. yeah capricorn man <laughs> i fucking got way too shit canned Mm -hmm. and it's like an hour into the podcast i was like oh dustin you're gonna have to cut a lot of this out because you sound like a babbling Uh, moron and it was one of those like the thing about having a drink and podcast is Mm when you drinking but sometimes all right and i wasn't the host (laughs) so i was like it was supposed to be joe and chase they're asking me questions so i was like Mm -hmm. i'll fucked up but a zoom like rehearsal before and then i was like Uh, i already drank too much during that and then i was like oh dude i Sometimes I just like to go way too hard, Nick. And that no, just I never leaves. You. Are you like that? Do you go hard when you're drinking? I mean, I go hard, but I don't, I try not to get to that point. Like yeah. once you see me lay down, that's it. It's a wrap. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll Everyone try to like push alone. three, four o'clock in the morning. But like, once you see me, like I'm, I'm tired guys. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm tired. Please leave me alone. All yeah. right. So for anyone that doesn't know, Nick, I would like for you to just tell everybody just a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from? What do you do? All that kind of stuff like that. I am a native New Yorker. So I grew up um, in Brooklyn, New York. I was born in Bel- Bellevue Hospital. And no, I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, you're not crazy. Wait, is that like um, a thing? Is that like a thing? Because Bellevue is like a, one of those hospitals that's well known for psychiatrics. Oh, okay. So they, they they have like this thing that if you're born in Bellevue, you're like crazy. So I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> so I was raised in Brooklyn, specifically Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I grew up in Tompkins Project, which is in best across the street from Marcy Projects where Jay-Z grew up. So I grew up around Jay-Z area. Yes. <laughs> I always, I lived in bed when I first moved here. And that was like the first thing people would always tell me was like, oh, but like are you lived in, here. I'm like, right? Oh, yeah, I'm doing something right, ain't I? I'm doing okay. <laughs> you're following his path (laughs) we actually went to the same middle uh no not same middle school same actually no same middle school went to the same middle school hey but he was like years ahead of me of course are there just like pictures of him everywhere not everywhere but you do see him in his in the yearbooks for sure i did see him in the yearbooks for sure you gotta promote it um i'm currently at the baruch college um weissman arts and sciences arts administration master's program <laughs> yes i saw that you were um you had posted something about like a final coming up so you're back in school right now right yeah so i'm almost actually almost done next semester will be my completion of the program i actually started in the beginning of this year and just like pushed through it pushed through Damn. covid i was like i need to get this fucking done like <laughs> that's fucking awesome and so you said it's art administration yes yeah, so it's basically like um like an arts manager so you okay. work so right now I currently work at the New York and Poets Cafe as their creative manager, and that's under the arts management umbrella. So I'm basically Ooh. like working on admin stuff um, for the New York and Poets Cafe. And I got that through an internship through the program. That's so, fucking awesome, man. Yeah, it's Congratulations. been really Congratulations. Cool. Thank you, thank you, Vu. When did you, when did you start that job? Um, I started in June. So after the whole stuff with Kids Club, um, obviously we all had to like, you know, try to find something. And I did, but it wasn't what I really wanted to do. I was just so like, I'm tired of working in something that is not my passion, not my like 
thing that I just want to sit in. Yeah. So I was like, bye guys. <laughs> Yep. And so I found the internship. And so I worked with them. I like hustled. I just like did whatever they asked me to do. I formed relationships, you know, I build relationships. And then um, in the beginning of the fall semester in like September, that's when they hired me. And they're like, yep, here you go. That's here fucking impressive, you. man. I'm, I'm happy for you. That's great. I think Thank it's you. important. Like you saying, like, you know, you're sitting in a job that you're not necessarily wanting to do. And I think theater people do that a lot. Like we're just mm -hmm. in this job because we want to do the other thing. But I, I'm, I'm fucking happy for you that you were like, fuck this dude, fuck this bullshit. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do what I love to do. And you exactly. fucking are. And then you went yeah. school that you're fucking almost done. Get the fuck I'm out of here. Done. Yeah. I would have fucking uh, was, was schooling hard during the COVID stuff to get I into mean it. So it was like my first semester um, in grad school. So I haven't been in school in five years. Um, and my undergrad was in psychology. So this is a big career change. Yeah. And so I was really nervous. I was like, oh my God, this is grad school. Like I need to like enhance my vocabulary. I need to like be this way and do <laughs> this and that. And I'm just like, so it was like definitely like a shock to yeah. be in grad school and then when COVID happened when we had to switch online that was even another layer because I'm just like oh my god like I haven't even settled into the program or like mm -hmm. into being a grad student and now this whole big thing where we have to go remotely it, that first semester was a little bit of a, a toughy one yeah for so. sure I mean getting but then it became easier as we like just did stuff so yeah I would be scared. I think even thinking about going back for like a master's program, I'm like, dude, I barely got through college as it was. Like I did all I cared about was fucking around. So I, I'm like, I, if I wasn't a theater major, I probably wouldn't have made through the damn thing. And so, no, facts. you know, hey. like, <laughs> no, yeah. You, I mean, there's some way, somehow you always like push through it. You always get to yeah. the end. You, you get know? by. All right, so I was gonna, I, yeah, I told you I was gonna say this for. So the reason I was late because I wanted to talk to you about this. I was watching Lion King too before I got on. You were, yeah. <laughs> so deception. Is, that was. I think I was right. I was right at the end of that song when I finally when I had to get big on here. But so for awesome. everybody listening who doesn't know, Nick and I are big big supporters of the fact that Lion King two soundtrack is very much better than Lion King number one. So Absolutely Nick, since you're more back. musically enchanted than I am, and you'll have more credit <laughs> talking about it than I will, um, why is it better? And then I'll talk to you about the movie, everything, but why do you think that soundtrack is so much better than the original Lion King? So I is think it it's just because of the zebra and the deception part? Uh, no, <laughs> that definitely does add to it. <laughs> but I honestly think as a whole, it tells a story. The music. Yes, the music tells the story of what's going to happen in the movie. Yes. And Lion King 1 kind of didn't because the story itself was really good. Yes. That's, you know? See, so, that's why you should have said it because I would have not said it as poetically. So yes, <laughs> everything you're thinking right now. Yes. So I just feel like the music is a... I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the Lion King 2 is like a Romeo and Juliet because like they're both yeah. like a Shakespeare reflection of plays and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's like a really great movie it's a great storyline i just i just think the music really carries the movie yes especially I, uh, like he lives in you like don't dude, you get chill so here's the coolest thing about he lives in you man i don't know where i've said this on the podcast apologize for repeating it that song is my last song before i went on for football games mm. that is the last song before i go on to any stage production like okay. i listen to it and it gets me in this zone that mm. i can't even that song is fucking awesome. So he lives in you is fucking amazing. Yes. I also and I think thought, it's very spiritual. Yes, it's very spiritual. Very and I think spiritual. the songs are just way more personable. Like mm. there's so much more emotion behind them. Mm. And I'm just like in it. I'm in it. Now, mm -hmm. the and the fucking sassy ass zebra yelling deception. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Jesus Christ. Disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> They're just making this fucking kobu look like a fucking asshole i'm like yeah, dude you gotta you fucked up man you gotta, you right? gotta take this for Facts. a bit <laughs> like there you go sorry <laughs> no but it's just like so much like fierceness and sass yes. like you you cannot sit with us like get no, out of here you, like <laughs> it's so much regina george you can't sit with us get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah like bye ho like <laughs> bye, so ho. but <laughs> 
But I also live, live for Zira. Like, I'm not much of a villain person. Like, I'm like, okay, I get all of them. I get their, their stories or whatever, but I'm the heroic. Like, I just love yeah, being Simba, you yeah. know? Yeah, for sure. But Zira, I live for her. Like, I think she's so, huh. an, she's such an underrated villain because I also think she's super funny. Like, if she, if that, if a drag queen could impersonate her, like, the, it would be Zira. Like, if Zira was in live action, it would be a drag queen. Ah. And I just love it because she's just so, like, extra. Her voice is so, like, sharp. Like, he will be king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never thought of it. I mean, that's, I, I, I wouldn't have, that's fucking, yeah, you're totally right. Because she is pretty yeah. badass villain that you don't ever think about. But mm -hmm. also, people don't think about Lion King 2 in general, though. Facts! And I'm so sad about that. I'm like, <laughs> Lion King 2 is better than fucking half these other Disney movies that they fucking have. Facts. Lion King 2 is fucking amazing. Like, I just don't get that. So I'm always going hard for Lion King 2. Like, you guys have to watch it. You guys have to watch yeah. it. It's a fucking watch good... Watch it. It's a good watch. watch. It. So now, good. so, we're not saying... we're The story in Lion King 1 is better than Lion King 2. Right? We do we agree yes. on that or do you not? Yes. I agree. No, I would I, say that the story do, is yeah. better because yeah. Lion King one is my favorite movie because it's just it, you can't fucking fit. But yeah. Lion King two, it's definitely in top top six. Like it's fucking Facts. still there. Like, you definitely have to watch it. It's it's a really great sequel because Disney yes. doesn't have really great sequels. No, so never, as never. a sequel alone, it's really great. It's like a really great, you know, yeah. overall story. Dude, you're so right. And Disney sequels just fucking. They suck. suck sometimes. Like, Are you you're yeah, you're a pretty you're a big Disney fan, right? Yeah, I am. You I live am. for Disney. So I what's your favorite what's I, your favorite I, Disney movie? My it, Lion King, Lion King Lion? 2. And then I love Hercules. That word, dude. That yeah, that's my right there. Right there. I'm right there with you. It's like Lion right? King. Like the gospel truth. Like get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, <laughs> it's, the travesty is the fact that I don't understand. I know that New York did it at the um, the the public uh the the outside oh uh, yeah the um i think it had like a summer stage or something yeah. the fact that that's not a fucking big bigger like well, that should have been pushed i don't give like fuck a lad now like put mm -hmm. let's put fucking hercules i don't see Facts. how Live that's not fucking least. yeah like let's go people come on hercules yeah. let's get it together fucking you Especially, made the movie and with... i would love for the muses to be men oh really why is mm -hmm. that I love that, but why, 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 why would you say because that? Because I think, you know, I feel like the ladies in the movie did an amazing job and it's like, that's their, that's their thing in a way. And if you want to take it into real life, let's represent mm. real life. You know what I mean? And Ooh. I feel like five gay men can definitely kill that shit. Oh my God, okay. that would be fucking awesome actually. Yeah, because so. then you're not, it's a different thing. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes people always, like these movies or remakes or whatever you're doing, they're just trying to, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, we're, we're gonna top whatever, but you're gonna be saying thing. It's like, even like the Lion King movie, the, like the, you mm -hmm. know, the new one that came out. Yeah. I was like, okay, the difference of trying to make those animals look way more real life, which I, yeah. I understood that. And I didn't understand mm -hmm. why people were upset about that too much. But you also, it's hard to top like Timon and Pumbaa from the first lion. Like you have to try to make it as different as possible because yeah. you're not going to, it's not going to be better. There's yeah. no way it's going to be better. Ever. But it could be different yes. and better it in be. its own way. Yes. But it has mm -hmm. to be different. You have to make, turn it a whole nother way. Exactly. That's fucking, exactly. Dude. See? And Hades should be a female. Just Hades saying. should be a female. Why mm -hmm. is Hades, why should Hades be a female? Because it would be the same thing. Like, let's have a contrast between, you know, Zeus and Hades. You know, it maybe the, the pronouns might not change. Like saying, mm -hmm. oh, that's my sister. But you can definitely dress up, have a female and dress up as Hades. So, yeah. You know, and play on characters like that. I'm fucking for it. I'm fucking um, for it, dude. Because, yeah, I think you would think you'll, you'll see. Because then it, it kind of gets away from as much like the Hades voice or like all these, vo like the gospel mm -hmm. singer's voice. You're like... Oh no, mm -hmm. this is a diff different thing. I can't compare this. Exactly. And that's what art. happens. You start to compare things, you know, like yes. even like the Selena series and the movie. Oh, I haven't watched like, it. Oh, okay. Well, just say I mean, it's I different. I mean, I know it's how different. Selena, I know how, hey, I know how. Selena I mean, yeah, is. we all know how <laughs> what happens. <laughs> but, oh, you know, a lot of people got really upset that, you know, oh, this is not the movie. Like, what the fuck are they doing? And it's like, yeah, you're right. It's not the movie. Like, it's not J-Lo. It's not none of them. And they did their own thing and they told their own story. 
but the like, series is telling a different story. Even though it's Selena, it's still a different story. Why are people so fucking hell bent on shit like that? Why? They I don't have- know. It's the judgmentalness. Like yes. I think it's like people are just so overly judgmental and critical. Why? It's like I don't just get see that it for what all. it is. Why? People are so judgmental either. over the fucking littlest thing. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't like that cheese it flavor. There's this. Bring it back to white cheddar. Why are you fucking mad about a ch- flavor of chips right now? Why like, just don't eat it. You don't eat a fucking don't. Okay, cool, bro. Thanks. All right. Maybe someone else might like it. Like, <laughs> seriously. And then everybody... it makes other people who actually do like it feel bad. Piece like... of shit. Piece of shit, Nick. <laughs> we, yeah. Everyone is entitled to their opinions. Of course. Absolutely. Hands right. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like we also need some type of like understanding and compassion that compassion yeah, towards there's a difference between having an opinion on something and then just mm-hmm. being judgmental about it yeah i can say i don't like that but i could see why you like it i like to think i'm pretty good at that like yeah that fucking sucks to me but like i like it because of this or whatever but like you don't have to like it like that's cool yeah and i'm not gonna cool. keep like arguing with you about it like exactly like you like this i like this let's keep it pushing cool yeah it's like <laughs> but people just want to argue about every goddamn mm-hmm. thing everything it's like relax relax motherfuckers <laughs> now granted i get into that with like football and stuff i'll be like this is the best football player ever but now i'm like of course, yeah, of why course. would i argue why would i argue about that <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous so mm. i want to preface this i don't know much all right i've done my research but i want to know like what is what's what got you started in doing the drag queen life please correct me if i sound stupid saying anything because that's all, oh. all I do is sound dumb. I want to no. know <laughs> what what's it like doing it now? Because I know mm-hmm. drag queen stuff usually happens like at the nighttime. It's a nighttime scene, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And exactly. how have you adapted for the quarantine when, and stuff like that? But when did yeah. you get started in during drag queen performances? So thank you for asking. Um, and of course, like I, this is also an education opportunity because oh, you, please, like you said, yes, you don't exactly. know as much. I feel like yes. this is really good to like bridge those gaps. You know, so there's an understanding, and yes, then for sure. we can eliminate that judgmentalness from people. Get them the you fuck know? out of here. <laughs> exactly, you know. Some shit. So I started watching RuPaul's Drag Race. So I think I'm like a RuPaul's Drag Race baby queen. Like I, I got it. I did drag because of RuPaul's TV okay. show. And when so did when watching... did RuPaul's Drag Race start? So I'm, if I believe, out of 2007 or 2008, and then it became really popular, like 2009, 2010. Okay around that cool. time so I started watching like season two and three with my sister and yeah. so we will always watch it on um I forgot what show it's not VH1 it's another TV show with like yep. gay drama and stuff like that I forgot the, the <laughs> thing it'll probably come to me and I'll be like oh wait <laughs> yeah, there you go <laughs> so um so we were watching this series just watching it and at that time actually I wasn't I didn't identify as gay I was still like in the closet um, so I so was. So this so is when intrigued. you were how old, Nick? I was Roughly? seventeen. Seventeen. So you had not come out. You were. I had came out to my mom at like sixteen, but it wasn't like, oh my god, I'm coming out. No, it wasn't none of that. Like, <laughs> gotcha. You know. So, um, <laughs> but I was still like very much still in the closet, but I just wanted to tell somebody, of course. So I told like my mom, and my sister, but we would just watch it casually. Like I, I but I was so drawn to it because I just found it to be so artistic like you can literally create a whole new character for yourself whether Mm -hmm. it's a female or not to me drag even though drag stands for dress as girl didn't know that yeah so dress as girl so men dressing up as girls is considered a drag queen okay um so I always found it to be very artistic and you can literally create a character for yourself. So for me, it was a way of artistically expressing myself um, in different ways. So it didn't, act- it didn't actually happen right away. It took a couple of years for me to really like step up to, you know, that confidence and that courageous step. And then one year, June 18th, 2018, I was like, Miss Hallowell is born. And so I wanted to just do it and be like, fuck everybody. This is going to make me happy. <laughs> yeah, good. That's fucking you awesome. You know, like, it's just like, so I, because also too, like, I really loved makeup. 
So okay. I would always watch my sister play with makeup, my mom, my cousins, my aunt. And I'm like, oh, do my makeup, do my makeup. And like every time I would go to like my friend's house, my fairies is what I call them. I would always say, oh, do my makeup, do my makeup. And I would start to be like, oh, I want to do my own makeup now. Like, <laughs> so I had to just start like learning YouTube videos, like looking at products, what to use, ask around. And then slowly but surely, like I just started practicing. I took a whole year to practice my makeup, walk in heels, um, learn how to tuck, like how to like what outfits to buy, shoes, until so my my coming out or like being born in drag persona came. I had to really like get ready for that um big performance. Yeah. And so it was a really sold out show. Um I performed Ariana Grande's Into You. So that was my first performance ever. Um, of course, good. you know, I love Ariana. I know you do. I know you love, <laughs> you, Nick, you love some Ariana. I love Ari. Oh, that's my bitch. <laughs> anyway, and then I closed it. <laughs> and then I closed it with Christina Aguilera's Not Myself Tonight. And it's like a really like. Uh, that's the first cool. concert I ever went to live. Is a really? Christina Aguilera Bionic? concert. No, no, oh, sorry. Aguilera. Sorry. Yeah, I don't, they don't even know all of her songs, <laughs> but Christina Aguilera, it was Genie in a Bottle, that, Ooh, that album. Okay. I went dope, there with dope, my dope. sister was like, you're coming with me. And I've never been to a concert before. I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And then that was the first, that was the first, she was the first person I've seen live. <laughs> that was pretty good time, man. She's right? Singer, she, man. She, yeah, she's, no. she can blow out the park. <laughs> Um, and then ever since then, like, I just slowly but surely just started creating more and more looks, practicing more, like, you're always, even, whatever you do in life, whether it's, like, theater, makeup, poetry, school, like, you're always learning in life. You're always yeah. learning. So just because I had came out as Miss Hollowell doesn't mean that I knew everything. I had to continue mm-hmm. learning and growing as queen, see what didn't work, what worked. Like I didn't start dancing with heels until like just recently because I didn't know how to dance in heels. So I will how, always leave my shoes off <laughs> or take them off it? during performance. How, I, uh, how hard is it? Hard as shit. How do you like, how long does it take you to get comfortable like in heels and stuff? I, I don't, that seems fucking horrible to me. Like that, I'm not. I can barely. I'm a stumbling motherfucker as it is. Like I just. Like, I'm gonna walk in heels. How long did it take you to do that until you were like comfortable uh, doing it? Like a couple of months, because it's like yeah. we are not like we didn't grow like as boys growing up. Like mm-hmm. we're not given heels to walk in. We're given sneakers and boots and stuff like that. Yeah. But girls at a young age, like you know, 14, 15, 16, they're given heels as presents. You know, because they wear it with their dresses and their skirts and stuff. Yeah. So you know, I had to recondition my myself of how to walk in with heels you just need to have like really strong calves and like bend your knees a little bit and pick up your feet okay well i probably pretty much yeah and just practice you know? yeah just practice non-stop so <laughs> with the drag persona coming out did that help you come out as nick as a person like as a as a gay man did that help you come out as a in oh so totality, I... if that makes sense no, that makes sense. I, 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 yeah. So I'm not I very had... poetic with my questions, Nick. You're in no a worries. South I got episode. you. Boo. I got yeah, you. yeah. I, I bring in smarter people than me so I can get my point across, and then they go, "Oh, this is what dipshit means. He's just drinking." Yeah. So that's uh, it's a whole plan. <laughs> I got you, Dusty. I got you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Boo Boo. Um. So no. So I had Kim. I had like told my mom at like 16. Like I had like you know slowly but surely starting to come out. Mm -hmm. until like I was around 18 and I had done this like really I thought it was a really dope workshop a lot of people think it's like really weird or whatever and they're entitled to own opinions it's this workshop called momentum education and so there's three different levels there's beginners advanced and leadership I did the beginners and I only has I only have ever done the beginners um and I did it when I was 18 because one of my best friends had did it when she was like going to school so she like yeah you should do this you know trying to be a salesperson (laughs) she (laughs) caught me and I did it and it was a weekend of like intense um intense intense reflections of who you are as a person like what do you want out of life like answer these questions about yourself like all of these things and it was very powerful. And ever since I did that, I came out and I stood in who I was. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just like, no, I'm gay. And this is who I am. Either you love it or you just don't be a part of my life, you know, like, cause I have to live in my truth. Yeah. And so at 18, that's when I slowly started climbing that ladder. 21, 22 is when I started becoming more like out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and then that's kind of led into like the whole drag queen persona. Yeah. 
what's so. the what is the pressure or fear like when you're when you're coming out as a as a person as a gay man or a mm-hmm. gay anybody a gay person is that is that is that the right, correct term actually am i saying that is that is there a better way for me to say that if that makes sense um i mean i feel like well, i always am i feel like i just i firstly just say things wrong all the fucking time but i always yeah. am worried that i'm not saying it the way the respectful way no. and the way i should be saying it i think you're saying it perfectly fine like if like with me i identify as a gay male so you can say gay person which can encompass you know other men who identify as gay you know yeah. um even others who you know stuff like that but if you call someone out of their name that's when it becomes a problem you know so like if a lesbian identifies as a lesbian you're not going to say oh you're bisexual gotcha you know like bisexual person no they're a lesbian so you say hey let's like that this is a lesbian person yeah 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 i got you so you're doing your you're you're fine you're i'm 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 doing okay i'm I'm glad i'm trying fucking jesus christ i'm always yeah and then when you want to just do a general sense you say just say any person from the lgbtq community yes that see see Um, i just again scary thing about drinking podcast i just don't remember half the shit or i don't know what i'm talking about (laughs) we're lucky here that i haven't drank too much so we're good (laughs) um (laughs) so as a person from the lgbtq community Mm -hmm. what is the if you could give some people like me also an understanding and maybe some friends of mine that maybe not understand that do listen Mm -hmm. what is that stress like with coming out and how do you deal with it and how did you feel very afraid to were you were you scared? Was it hard? How, how was that process? Um, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. um, my whole life um, growing up, I was always teased, taunt, taunted, bullied, even by family. You know, like I have a gay, a lesbian aunt. Um, she also says, if, it, if it, she says you're gay, it's fine. But I have a lesbian aunt and she was pretty much the only person in my family. And I knew that she liked women. I just didn't know the connection with that. So mm-hmm. I thought it was normal. But yeah. then when you have people in school, some of your aunts, some of your cousins, like calling you out of your name, like saying, oh yeah, he's going to be a sissy when he grows up, or he's a faggot, or he's gay, or he's, he's this, he's going to be a crybaby, like all of these things, I felt like if I came out, I was going to prove all of them right. Wow. And Did it you- made me really scared because I just did not want to be different. I want sure. to just be normal. So I even tried to have a girlfriend at one time. Like that just did not work. Like that didn't work. <laughs> like I was just, I was just gay. Like I'm just gay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, I was terrified. I was so terrified. But I had I had to muster up and tell my mom because I was talking to this boy at this time when I was mm-hmm. like 16, because I wasn't really talking to girls, you know, I was talking to boys. Um, and so he will always want me to come visit him, you know, not too much older than me, like another teenage boy, but he will live so far. And I will always like constantly have to go to see him, but I would have to go in a sneak. And my mom is very Latina, very intuitive. She's like, where you going? Who you going <laughs> out going? with? Like, where you going, boo? Like, <laughs> they know, they know. So they know, she they just know. knew. And so I had to sit her down and I just started crying my, my eyes out. And I just told her, I was just, I mean, I came out as bisexual, but then like I later on changed it. But like, no, I'm really, I'm gay mom, (laughs) you know? Um, And it was scary. Like even my family didn't know until later on. So like I was like 18 and then my dad didn't even know until I was like 22. Was your mom very supportive? Was your dad very supportive? So my mom was very supportive. Um, She was just like, oh my God, I love you, Poppy. And she's like, I knew already since you were like 10. (laughs) Moms are good like that, man. They're really good. They have that instinct, that instinct in them that they just know. They know things, man. (laughs) Yeah. My dad was okay with it. He's like, yeah, I kind of figured after a while when you didn't bring a girl home, uh, but I still love you and stuff like that. And I was like, of course, thank you, dad. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's awesome. Cause I, I just know friends that have not had that experience. So yeah, I'm sure. glad you at least have that. Even that doesn't take away from how hard it probably was with the world. Cause the world sometimes piece of shit, fucking people that are dumb as fuck. Yeah. But um, it's uh, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for you. That's, that's just, it's cool to at least have that support. And I would assume mm-hmm. that probably helped you get a little confidence you know, yeah. start to put the tires going a little bit. Yeah, a little um, bit, a little bit. It felt good to have bit. that, like, the support. Yeah, and, of course, sure. like, my friends and stuff, you know, they yeah. were very supportive, very, like, yeah, some of them are like, I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I told like, you, Nick. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my uncle had came out, and then I was, like, the first 
person I knew from that from the LGBTQ community. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Cool for him. Yeah. I like, just never, so normal. Like, yeah, like, to me, I like, never thought I just even, like, yeah, I was middle school when they, when I found out and like my family, I just never think I've never thought that way, which is interesting coming from the family I have in Nebraska. They're very, uh, right wing yeah. type of thinking a lot of them are luckily my mom just loves anything i do or whatever but like <laughs> i never i just never personally thought that way mm -hmm. and i just i remember once like my girlfriend at the time in high school like her cousin had came out mm -hmm. and someone was picking on him and i punched that dude right in the fucking face wow, like oh dude don't don't no. fuck with this this is stupid like this is yeah. dumb i've just never thought that way so i never i can never really understand that hatred and judgmental bullshit yeah i've just never i don't people live your life dude i don't care what you're doing yeah, like what do just, you do what do you do behind closed doors is none of my business none of my damn business so why are you so proud why would i worried about anything you're doing facts. this is nothing to do with me facts. i've always like, thought that way so pressed and yes. those are the people that actually secretly want to be like you yeah no i, I <laughs> my, my gay friends are the coolest people i fucking know yeah. like they're the funniest i'm like i wish i was this comfortable like i wish i was this <laughs> god that's fucking awesome what is the most misconception about drag that people have that you would like to like, if you could snap your fingers and like change that, mm -hmm. what would you do? What, what would be the biggest misconception of a drag queen? Um, I think the have? most, I think the misconception is like that we want to be women. Hmm. Yeah. You know, like we want, like there is such a thing as the men transitioning into a woman. Mm -hmm. genetically biologically you know through surgery all that stuff you know transgender person and that's in their own right that's what they decide to do mm -hmm. however a, a lot of drag and some drag queens do do that they do transition fully into a woman and that's okay too but not every single drag queen that puts on a wig puts on those heels put on the makeup wants to be a woman you know what i mean like i that to me that's embracing my feminine side but it's so, not about you wanting being to be a, a woman. woman. Yes, I do want to be called Miss Hollowell because that is my name while I'm in your, drag. Your, your performance name. And performance, you know it's what I mean? Like, like I don't want to be called Nick. Like, yeah, it's your, yeah, it's your Except performance. Except for my mom. Your... She could call me Nick when I'm in drag because she's my mama. But... <laughs> your mama, she do what she wants. I got you. But everyone else, you know, I do correct people like Miss Hollowell. But it's not like, because I, I know I'm still a man. I know I still have a penis. You know what I mean? But it's not like, I want to transition all the way into a woman. That's not where I'm coming from. I'm coming yeah. from a place of empowerment of, you know, everyone has both masculine and feminine energy and I'm just expressing minds through my drag, through this yeah. concept, through this illusion. You know, I love wearing the nails. I feel fierce as fuck, you know? <laughs> like I love putting, I love the, I just love makeup in general. Even if I'm not in drag, I still wear makeup. Um, because I just think it's very artistic, like our faces are our canvases. And so yes. that's like my way of painting, ah. you know, like I even now I started painting on other people, like I started doing other people's makeup, like my mom, some of my fairies. Um, but to me, it's just about embracing your inner fierceness and your inner like confidence, you know, like, like I'm that. here, I'm queer <laughs> and i'm gonna do this shit you know what i mean and i'm gonna ha make sure you have a great time you know I so love i love that. to like lip sync and i love to like perform i love to like have a different concepts like i just did a selena tribute the other day with grandma la flor you know because i'm just like oh i'm inspired by her let me put on some let me put on a bustier with her book on like a nice high like um pants <laughs> you know like a nice shawl you know a little doobie <laughs> you know uh, was this one of your live performances that you've been doing during the quarantine stuff like so the whole COVID is, process so there's n there's not that many gigs like that because of covid mm -hmm. um but i've done a virtual one um called the night of vibes recently and i did a spoken word through that and i also did a performance with my drag husband um mr j hollowell so how has that been have how, trying to have you been trying to create those live performances during all this stuff that aren't, when the performances aren't there for any actor or any performer any actress performers in general really just performers like yeah. any sort of person in the art industry have you just been trying to create your own type of work and just get it out there the best way that you can online stuff yeah so at the new weekend um so i'm 
at the new weekend, I've done my own thing, which is the, my first one was the Nighter Vibes. Um, the second one is actually going to be a play called Rough Magic, um, directed by Ashley L. Calderon, um, and that's going to be virtual as well. So everything that we're doing right now is virtual, um, because you know with COVID regulations, we really can't open up indoor activities. For we sure. can do indoor things, but it has to be literally like three people. Yeah. You know, so it's yep. really, really difficult. But you know, Zoom definitely helps. You know, we can right. do things. Together. Zoom's dope as shit. That's how yeah, I started this podcast. You know, Zoom, exactly. All right, cool. Like, <laughs> it was pretty easy, like man. Can, it's more of an outreach. We can have more people like come to see a show, and so that's why I'm like, maybe we can do a Zoom play and test it out. So Rough Magic is going to be like the test to see how it make how it how it does by selling ticket prices not too expensive you know um yeah. coming together for rehearsals you know doing all those things and still giving people work you know because yeah. all of these actors and these crew members are still getting paid um it may not be a lot but it's still something to give something in your pocket yeah i think any actor or performer right now would probably tell you like i don't give a fuck about getting paid like any mm -hmm. sort of performance or whatever like i just did a zoom play on friday and oh, dope. it was it was awesome like it was cool to like finally like i've luck like when i did this started this during the process like this was my cool creative thing and i've loved mm -hmm. it um but like it was cool to finally get back to like as simple as it was it's just on zoom we're just reading a play and like you know we rehearsed it for two months and stuff like trying to make it as intuitive mm -hmm. and doing little things with it but it was it was fun to embody another character online it was like oh this is like fuck dude i miss acting like i miss right. performing and shit and, and there's also a film element to this because yes on a little camera. bit yeah yeah you're on camera and you're you're like oh i should oh, yeah, lose some weight mm -hmm. all right cool yeah fucking good together um <laughs> facts same here facts, <laughs> fucking COVID. um fuck it all <laughs> so i can't fucking um i can't do makeup i couldn't do makeup when i was a perform like just an actor in college so i don't mm -hmm. know how the fuck you can how do you learn to you said youtube tutorials yeah i can't write my write my name legibly mm -hmm. so anything even past that i'm like i don't know how the fuck you do any of this shit <laughs> but i remember just like doing makeup in college and people were like doesn't i'll do it i just sit the fuck back or i just wouldn't <laughs> put it on i'm like i can't do it i just look like an idiot i don't know what i'm yeah. doing so yeah. so you how did you learn to do makeup so well so I did, so I did YouTube videos um, and then I just like, I did YouTube videos with guys who um, like do drag or like just put on makeup, like other male makeup artists. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Don't uh, cough on my podcast ever. <laughs> Let me take another swig to, you know, moisture it up. So I did YouTube videos, watch them. So while they were doing it, I was doing them. You know, and then I would like try to like fix my mistakes. And then like I would send pictures to like my sister, my friends, like, hey, what needs to be fixed? And they'd be like, oh, you're not blending or you're not contouring right. And then like I would just keep on practicing and then I would look at other drag queens doing their process, you know? Yeah. Um, and like see what they do and add to it. And it's just like see what works, see what doesn't, and then you just make it to your own. Yeah, that's fucking mm -hmm. great. I wanted to tell you a uh, story about my first time at a drag show. Ooh, and just to see it it's it's really not that entertaining so let's not put mm. the fucking whatever oh, okay but um <laughs> don't hype it up, don't hype it up. I try, yeah i don't hype it up too much because i don't want to everyone's like oh it's gonna be good and they're like doesn't that story sucked um <laughs> but i just so me not i'd never been to one and it was after like some uh company thing for uh the company uh the company we worked for kids club and they so we were at a bar and they're like oh this is gonna be a drag show i'm like oh cool all right never seen one mm -hmm. sweet and i never really i was like what are they i didn't know what they did like someone told me they lip sync some people sing i don't know but i just didn't know anything about it but i had no idea about the money and i mm -hmm. felt like a piece of shit because i didn't have like i didn't have cash on me mm -hmm. and then everyone's like handing money and doing things i was like fuck god fuck it fuck it, fuck it. so i ran across this, like i couldn't find any i needed to I ran across an atm mm -hmm. and i took like 30 bucks out and i but then I went to the bar. I was like, I need you to put oh, a bunch of ones here. I need a bunch of ones. And I just was uh, so frantically. Like, I was like, I don't want to look like the dipshit that doesn't know what's happening. And I just was like, get, I need all the ones. They're like, dude, we don't have that many ones. I'm like, God damn it. Um, <laughs> I just felt like a fucking idiot. But um, it was really cool. And then another time was, so I've never watched RuPaul's Drag Race. And all my mm -hmm. roommates, they love it. They watch it all the time. Or most of them do, I think. So I remember I met uh, Joey. You know Joey? 
from, from kids club. club okay yeah so we had he was watching and he asked me to come watch it with him I'm like all right mm-hmm. dude i'll come watch it i'll like i'll see what all the hype's about i don't know way better than i thought it was going to be and i was like i see why people fucking like this <laughs> I'm like, yeah it's, i was all it's fun. <laughs> i was all into it i was like no that one shouldn't win no that, not that drag queen no 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 i like had my favorite mm-hmm. <laughs> and i was like no that's the one i picked <laughs> But, right. Um, yeah. No, it was a, get in, in, involved because it's like a competition and stuff like. Yeah, that. it's the same as any other reality like top TV model. show. Yeah, like. it's the same thing, man. <laughs> it's the same shit. I I've worked with you a few times, and mm. I like people tell me I have that and they get of, of like just with kids. You definitely have that too. I've loved watching you with children and stuff. When did oh, you start teaching you. children? How long were you doing it? And what what makes you think that it's so natural to you? So I started actually when I was, so I always babysat when I was Ooh. younger. So I have two younger cousins who was like, one is like 16 now, one is like 13. So I always babysat. So I always like had a natural thing with kids. And then I had my first job at 18 um, at the Children's Aid Society um, for this respite program. And so I was in school, so I didn't want to like a part-time or full-time job. So I would do that and it would be once a month, a weekend, um, and you get paid like 150 every day. So it'd be like four days. So I'm getting paid like 500 bucks for just one time in a month. And that was good, you know, cause then like next three weeks I'll go to the next job, Yeah, you know? So that's how it would kind of work. So ever since then, like I started, I was a counselor um, and then I was like an assistant manager of the, like the cabin. Um, and then I went on to working at the YWCA um, there. I started out as an activity specialist and I moved up to an office manager, then became an assistant program director. And then I worked at the YMCA too at the same time. So that was also like a conflict of interest. They, no one was supposed to know that I worked at both. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I need the extra money, you know? So, so whatever, like, whatever. Get the fuck out. <laughs> right? Don't care. Right? <laughs> Couldn't do what I gotta and do, bro. <laughs> It's like this is just money, boo. Like we're all working for kids. <laughs> this is money, like, boo. We're just trying to get by. Facts. Like the struggle <laughs> is real. Anyway, so then I um then I stopped working with kids for a little bit. And then I went, then that's when I like had my other job. And then I was just like, fuck it. Like I need to just do what I know because I need mm-hmm. money right now. So I that's when I found the kids club. Was was it for me personally, I, I feel like all I've ever done, like I have carpentry experience and all that kind of stuff, but like kids have always been like, my mom was a chocolate provider. I've always been mm. around kids. Like since I was younger, like I've just, there's always been kids in my life or whatever. Yeah. And then I always like the Nate jobs when I was in high school, like tutoring and doing things with kids. And then I was in college, like, all right, I got a job taking care of kids after school. I've always had that job. Mm-hmm. I've always had some sort of kids job, no matter mm. what. And now as an older person, I feel like I'm like, fuck feel like it's all i've done yeah i'm like a little afraid i'm like what the fuck else am i good at like i'm actor and i have to take care of did you when you started your new job did you have that kind of fear at all that you'd always you just worked with kids and it's like working with kids is such a different fucking thing Mm -hmm, sometimes going into another job like there's a creative aspect that you can always bring into another uh, job and everything but Mm -hmm. i have that fear of not knowing what else to fucking do yeah because you're so used to talking to a three-year-old which i love them but also like what the fuck am i gonna do sit at a desk i've tried that i'm like fuck that i hate this shit (laughs) thanks did you have that fear at all or anything getting into a new i mean so i've for some reason i've always worked with kids but always had another job so I was Even simultaneously me. learning skills at the same time. So I worked, I was a sales assistant at a bowling alley. I was a barista for a while, you know. Um, I was. I worked at a mail room one time at a law firm, you know, so I would always pick up these skills, you know. Yes. Um, okay. So the only thing I ever get worried about is like, oh my God, like, am I going to be a boss ass bitch in this group or am I going to be quiet as a mouse? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to, I want to feel the room, the energy, like who am I going to be working with that's always something that goes in my mind because i know i can do the work mm-hmm. you know what i mean it. it's, it i just worry about more of like okay like am i gonna like this person or not yeah <laughs> if we're gonna vibe or we're not you, yeah i think you like me also go off vibes and you're also a very positive person yeah you're very positive i don't ever yeah. see you like even if you don't see someone too much you can kind of see like all right these like oh, they're dipping a bit you just always seem to be right up here which yeah. i love how do you keep how do you keep that positivity through a bunch of shit all the time? It just seems like no matter what I'm talking to you, when I'm seeing you, you're just positive, you're happy, 
Like, right. granted, we all go through our ups and downs. Like, you know, yeah. like there's days that you're sad, probably. Like, no, not, I then I'd love to talk about that. But uh, <laughs> if you're never sad, tell yeah. me how that works and uh, how we fix that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I just feel like you're outgoing, very positive. So I, no, not I think. I need to say I know because basically, Dustin, like I, didn't have the most like greatest upbringing you know I've been through a lot in my life and I know I seem very young and I'm pretty sure we all have you know that's not saying that my struggles were better than yours or like it was different or worse or whatever like you know I have my experience you have yours everyone has theirs so from my experience growing up it was always a struggle an Uh obstacle you know to share a piece of it like I was homeless for a little bit You know what I mean? Like 18, 19, 20, 21. Like I didn't really have a home to like go to. You know what I mean? After my parents' separation and divorce, like it was just always a fight after a fight after a fight. And not like verbal, like fighting with people, like just fighting through life, trying to survive, just trying to like go through the next thing, like keep pushing forward. Um, So a lot of that just made me feel like even though bad things are happening to me, I don't have to be a bad person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can still be my best self. I can still show people that I'm here to still love and be there and connect, you know, because my struggles doesn't have to be your struggles. Like what I've been through is what I've been through. And that's something that I have to take care of each and every single day of my life. But what you see and what you get is me. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, dude. why am I going to, yeah, I have bad days. Like there's sometimes, like I know there was like a couple of times at Kids Club where people really felt my energy off. You know what I mean? Like when my mom was in the hospital, I almost lost her. Like everyone in 89th Street really were like, whoa, Nick, like who, are you okay? You know, like stuff like that. Like, of course, that's going to eat at my, you know, eat at me. But, you know, I still try to keep my chin up, still try to keep pushing forward, still try to keep, like, you know, living life, doing what I have to do. Um, So, you know, stuff like that is very, like, specific. But other than that, like, when I come into a door, when I come into a space, like, I want want you to see me at my best. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I don't want to, like this is about celebrating life and just being love and like just having fun and just always knowing that things are always going to get better no matter what you get go through in life it's always going to get better you know like Dude, being homeless go. one time but look at i have an apartment let's, that i'm very blessed with let's go you Nick. know what i mean like yeah dude get the <laughs> fuck out of here i'm not gonna ruin anything with my dumbest things no but i would just it's assume not. i would but I, me, i'm not my, i mean my stupid comments um but i would assume <laughs> like going through things like that that i never went through um mm-hmm. and i always try to think that i'm like a really hard-working person but i didn't have these kinds of experiences and like things like you've had to deal with so much struggle at times with being a being not normal everyone thinks you're not normal you have that fear you have that on top of (laughs) dealing with all this other shit and i would just that just means you're a tough motherfucker dude and (laughs) you just drive through and like you put your head down that's just Mm -hmm. fucking that's fucking inspiring man it's inspiring you just be like hey i'm gonna fucking just keep going and that's fucking awesome man yeah, thank you, so, thank you. All right, let's talk about how cool I am. Um, <laughs> yes, I want to know about you. <laughs> no, I got nothing, dude. I got nothing. <laughs> but you love dancing, right? I love dancing. Yeah, love dancing. Why? What makes you? What? What does dancing? What does dancing do for you, Nick? How does it make you feel? Why do you love to do it? Because I'm always jealous mm-hmm. of a person that is good at dancing and just Mm. is free like that i think Mm -hmm. it's such a freeing art form that i don't have i'm very free minded and stuff like i'll just i'll talk about anything say fucking anything but Mm -hmm. the dancing expression uh lane is so fucking empowering to me Mm -hmm. and i just want to know why you love to do it so much and one why are you fucking good at it why do i suck and (laughs) You Why is it important to you? Nah, dog. Let me tell you something, Nick. I fuck suck. No, I did see you dance a couple of times. A couple of times. Did you? That we put together. <laughs> that is dancing. You're just living your life. You know what I mean? Right. If you can move your hips and you can like, you know, I always say, or actually my mom always told me, 
she's like, if you're good in bed, then you are a good dancer. Like, and Maybe she was I saying suck that, in bed then. Sorry, lady. Like, Sorry about it. <laughs> no, Sorry I'm about pretty it. sure. I'm pretty sure you got this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Dusty. I'm sure I, you do. I just hope that somebody, some girl <laughs> that I've actually slept with is listening to this. Uh-huh. And they're just like, yeah, he fucking sucks. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, hey, man, can't please them all, bro. What do you want from right? me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Live your life, dude. <laughs> Facts. I was in dancing school when I was like 13, 14, 15. Um, so the dancing extends from like my sister going to school when she was younger. So she would, she started out in dance school when she was like two, three years old. And then she's always been in dance school. Then we you know we moved. So she stopped and then we went, then she went back into it. And so the dance school was looking for more boys. And so I was always scared of the stage. I was never really like liking the stage. I was always like, oh my God, like this is scary. I can't do it. Like stage fright galore. Yeah. But then I was just like, fuck that. Let me just like push myself and actually do it. And it turned out to be really, really fun. Like I learned so yeah. much in dance school. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like we had like competitions and stuff like that um, that we went to professionally like Atlantic City, Wildwood, um, even in this in like New York City, we went to competition. Um, and so like I studied dance for a good chunk of my teens and then stopped because we moved, you know. And I wish I would like go back to dance school, like if I, you know, can really go back to like an intensive program and like they can mm. stretch out my body and like I can go back to like ballet and stuff like that. Like I would love yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do have that foundation. So like I can pick up choreography easily. I can like do a routine. I can like be a part of like a group and like do a dance number together. You know what I mean? Because I do have those foundations. And Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, like even in the clubs, I could be like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you work it you can figure it out you're good yeah so did you go to school for acting or musical theater dance uh-huh. was it just dance or what was it that you went to school for so everything so all my training for everything was outside of school so i did go to edward r murrow high school in midwood brooklyn okay. um or yeah midwood brooklyn and um it was an art school but there um I kind of got into theater in a little bit, but not acting. It was more like producing, directing, stage managing. So I kind of went in the back end of it. Um, but I was mostly into fine arts. So like I was in there for like painting and drawing. So some of these things behind me is because I went to high school for fine arts. That painting right here is not uh, mine. That's so one of so my it's friends. It's not like you went to so like me, I went to a, a college for BFA of acting. I was in a bunch of Shakespeare shows, a bunch of shows. You didn't do things like that. Right? Yeah. So if for high school, it was fine arts. Then while I was in high school, that's when I went to a dance school on the side. So uh, it would be okay. after school and on the weekends. Okay. Then in college, I went for liberal arts and psychology. But then in my last year of college, I also went to the Bauer Group Theater Company, where I did their conservatory for two years. So at the okay. same time I was getting my BA, I was getting that conservatory certificate. Ah, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I was wondering, I was curious if you had done like like a, an acting Shakespeare show or something like that. I was have you I, never did. Done I did I did what schools I did so okay. I so I did um a, the Shakespeare play and a, redi- a rendition of it called What's Fools. It was um Midsummer Nights sorry, it was Midsummer Night's Dream and it became a rendition called What's Fools. And that was an all males, all I can't even speak right now. Oh, we <laughs> got drink. him. He's gone. He's um, fucked up. He figured it out. We found him. Fucked up. Um, that was an all male cast. So that was like my first Shakespearean play. But I've also done plays at the Bar Group. Um, I produced my own play called Water by the Spoonful. It was a play that was written by Kiara Alegria Hudes. Um, it's a three-part trilogy, but I did the middle one called Water by the Spoonful in 2017. So this was before Kids Club. Um, sold out show for the entire weekend. I played the main character, PTSD veteran who was just like this like tough guy. Um, and then I was like this lawyer with this play called Dirt is, Dirt is Where Flowers Grow. Um, and then I've done like the drag at the same time. So like I would be into different characters. And then um, I wrote the my web series Fairies, 
Um, I think I talked oh, about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. During I that. Kids Club. So yeah, we yeah. had to stop it because of COVID and stuff like that. So I was just like, yeah. that? let me just wait on that. But that yeah. is also, you know, a character that I'm going to be playing called Frankie. And then we had that play coming up, Rough Magic, where I'm going to be Prospero, the evil wizard. <laughs> Prospero, like from uh, um, um, Tempest. Tempest, so you're right? The Rough That's Magic is one of my is favorite like Shakespeare, Shakespeare shows. Shows. Yeah, so Rough Magic is a rendition of Tempest. That's fucking dope. Yeah. I so. play Ferdinand. Let me tell you that. You play, I play Ferdinand? Ferdinand? I play Love Ferdinand it. in college. I play Ferdinand. <laughs> I can still give you that. I have that monologue in my fucking... I have a bunch Love of it. I head. love it. Um, That's fucking <laughs> awesome, dude. So you yeah. know, you're, you're, you're just keep creating. It's not like this shit's even stopping you, man. Yeah. You're like, fuck this, dude. I'm going to keep creating shit, and I'm going to fucking keep going. That's fucking Thanks. awesome. Just keep going, boo. Just keep fucking... Keep fucking going, boo. Yeah. Um. Have you heard my theme song? It's really stupid. I love your theme song, <laughs> song actually. Like, <laughs> I was like, all right. Uh, uh, uh. You want to okay. know how drunk I was when I wrote that fucking theme song? <laughs> Intoxicated. <laughs> um, but that's what the best shit is created. I know, right? Like, See, I'm a stern believer. When you're drinking, if free- now there's a line, right? There's a line when you're drinking, okay? Yeah, you get past a certain point and you're like not like I did it on fucking <laughs> Friday or Saturday uh-huh. when I was gone uh-huh. but like and you're like alright now you're just fucked up but there's a creative part, part for me anyway mm-hmm. when you're drinking and everything is just you're feeling shit and you're like okay yeah. I, I feel this I'm there to the, 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 mm-hmm. there. does that make me alcoholic I don't fucking know no but, it makes you like, very you, like open it, the, yeah and you're, oh, you're way more open mm-hmm. which is my whole point of this whole podcast is like granted Again, I had to find the line sometimes, mm-hmm. and sometimes I toe over it. But like, hey, <laughs> that's the excitement fad of it. You're about to get a fucking drunk ass Dustin, but like, hey, but like this, like right now, this is one of those times where I'm like, I'm fucking here, almost like fucking mm-hmm. yeah, let's fucking, I, I feel it. I'm not fucked up. No, no, no. Do you feel that way when you're drinking no, I, and stuff? Yeah, definitely. And I also feel like that when I smoke too. Do you, you smoke? You smoke? You smoke a lot of that. You smoke a lot. I of that smoke weed? a lot of that good, mm, that good, <laughs> that good shit, that good shit. I've never been a big I've never been a big weed person. I've obviously mm-hmm. smoked I've smoked it before. I've mm-hmm. never had like a really good high. The last high I had oh, was a, really? parano- a paranoid fucking thing, and mm-hmm. that was the weirdest shit ever. And I've really not mm-hmm. really smoked since. But gotcha. um, I've never had like a good high. What is a good high like, Nick? So there was a really good high that I actually had recently with one of my best friends, Magdalia. Um, so I went to her house and she was just like, yeah, I got this ganja, this Gorilla Glue shit. I was like, ooh, bitch, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And so she was like, I want you to try it, boo. And I was just like, yes, this is a good high. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I haven't felt like this in mad long because I usually smoke to like, like, I don't know, like there's this openness and this creativity that just comes out like i just so start to like really like so i think sometimes with with people being high i've seen too many people when they're high they're just uh it's like there's nothing there are you so like, that's why you smoke an indica so there's different hybrids so indica you can say like in the couch one of my fairies taught me that too <laughs> she was like indica just remember as in the couch i'm like okay bitch i, I can remember that okay and then, bitch uh, right <laughs> And then you have sativa, which is okay. the upper high. So like your mind yeah. is like open and like you have energy. And then there's hybrid. So there's like in between. So like uh, you get high, okay. like the sativa high, and then you start to go down like the indica high. So it's just depending uh, on what strand you, you really There's smoke. different levels to this fucking yeah, game, Nick. Exactly. There's different levels. All right. So let's get into this rapid shots. Okay. Boom. It's time for rapid shots. So, all right, Nick, what I'm going to do, I got 10 questions for you, right, brother? 10 questions. Question one, Nick, who's your favorite performer? Uh, like TV character, like movie? Just this performer. You pick oh. any performer you want. Anything you okay, want, performer, Nick. I would have to say Ariana Grande, of course. Ariana Grande. Okay, yeah, yeah. you love Ariana Grande. Yeah, I love Ari. That's my favorite. good. Is she, she's like the number three or she's top three people followed on instagram i think yeah, I heard that she's, fact yeah she's like number two or i think the rock is number mm-hmm. one the rock is number one yeah this fucking she's guy. right there all right number two dream disney character blah, blah, blah. number two dream disney character you would like to play um aladdin Ooh, yeah right yeah. that magic carpet bro yeah um all right what animal best describes you a lion lion is it just because of lion king or like i'm also a leo 
Ooh. And I love cats. So I have a cat named Shadow. She's my familiar. There we fucking go. What's mm. one talent you wish you had that you don't? Mm, drums. I wish I knew how to play you the drums. You wish you played the drums? Oh, yeah. that's a good one. That's good one. Mm-hmm. It would have been funnier if you were like, <laughs> I have all the talents, Dustin. I don't fucking need <laughs> I was going to say that in my mind. And in my mind, I said that, but I didn't want to say that. In your mind, I did, I did feel it. I felt it. I was like, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm good at everything. No, I'm, I'm just joking. No, I'm not really dude. good at drums. I'm not really good at drums. I wish That'd I did. That would be a good talent to have. All right. You can only watch one show for the rest of your life. What is it? Charmed. The OG Charm, not the new one. There's a new Charmed? Yeah, on CW. It's like oh, three. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Is, it's a good show. It's a good show, and I appreciate it, and I respect it. But OG Charmed with Piper Peru, Phoebe, Paige, I, that's, that's my, that's my shit. shit. That's my juju. Okay. Who's a role model you look up to? Role model. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin? Really? Mm-hmm. I read his book. And so I read his book while I was trying to come out. And so I oh. got inspired by that. I'm like, oh, so he can really be himself and do it, you know? Do you like his music a lot? Yeah. Me and my mom listen to his songs all the time. My mom Living loves Ricky Martin. <laughs> I played that the other day for my preschoolers. I was like, you know. Oh, yeah. That's stuff. always on the iPod. <laughs> always there. It's still there. Always and they're there. like, oh, it's not really not appropriate. I'm like, delete it then. Or I'm going to keep playing it. Facts. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, this question is because I had this discussion with somebody and I just want to see if you have an opinion. What is the best, and it's weird because we're in New York City, okay? Okay. Let me preface this. Mm -hmm. What is the best chain pizza place to get a pizza from? So not, you know, we're in New York, great pizza, a lot of great places. But I'm talking about like chain places. Oh, like Domino's Pizza Hut? Yeah, places like that. What's the best one? I would have to say Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. You're wrong, dude. You're wrong, man. <laughs> what do you think? Is it? I would say I actually love Little Caesars. I think Little Caesars. Is oh, awesome. Little Caesars is good too. That's my second. You gotta get the right one, but like yeah. sometimes it's like it's cheap and it's fucking good. It is good. <laughs> it's like having cheese sticks. <laughs> hey, those fucking <laughs> sticks they got, they're pretty awesome. Bag. What's one thing that you long for? Something you really want? Ooh. Yeah, I get serious on this podcast. Now. One thing around. that I long for. It goes, my mind goes materialistic and spiritual. <laughs> Give me both of them. You got both of them? Okay, so much materialistic would be like a nice house, condo, like thing by the beach. Okay, you gotcha. Know? And I'm always thinking Hawaii for that. Like just by the beach and just chilling yeah, by the water. Dope. You know, dope. always seeing the sunset. Spirituality, mm-hmm. um, continuous in the inner peace. Ooh. So always have this inner peace inside you where, you know, because sometimes that peace is not there because of life. You know what I mean? Society. Life. life happens. You always have those outside influences. As much as you try to protect yourself, you're always going to have something coming to try to disturb that. So if I can always wow. have everlasting peace inside me and being on this earth, that's what something that I yearn for spiritual motherfucker i love it i love that i already know the answer to this one but um go to music artist music artist to listen to so of course ariana grande but i, I definitely love celine dion mariah carey wow. Whitney Houston, you know my divas your divas <laughs> all right what harry potter character do you relate to the most Ooh, that's a good one i know so of course i love harry potter himself but I don't relate to him as much. Mm-hmm. I always saw myself as, and even not like, I see myself as Harry Potter because I like like him, but I always relate to Dumbledore because he's so didn't like- didn't expect that at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> because I think Dumbledore, like even though he's like an older man and I feel like I'm going to be like him when I grow up, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think- I don't, there's something about Dumbledore's character when it comes, like even in the books, like very wise, but mystical and very accurate. And it's just like, I don't know what your thought process is, but this fucking works. You know what I mean? And sometimes I feel like that's me. Like sometimes people are just like, how the fuck you did this? And sometimes I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. know. You know, like, I don't know either. <laughs> like in my Not mind, I'm just cool, like, bro. you know, like I say, I don't know, but in my mind, I'm just like, I know what I did. You know what I mean? So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It was fucking yeah. Dumbledore. All right, that was rapid shots. Hey, good job, Nick. Yay! That was good, man. 
2021 is going to be good. You think so? You think 2021? All right, I'm Nick, not what, saying what like you... right away. Not right what? away. Okay. So what what would make you think 2021 is going to be good right now? What's your, what's your like shining like your light at the end of the tunnel? What is it that you're saying that makes you kind of feel that way? Because bad things don't last forever, right? Do you get what I'm saying? So although yeah. we went through this whole year of fucking COVID, you know, mm-hmm. and we're still going through it because obviously like nothing has drastically changed. We have a vaccine and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean that the world's going to be like this. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's going to obviously gradually go back to normal. But, you know, this signif- this COVID and this quarantine pandemic really signified as a global movement of yes bad shit happens to all of us we're all human so it all affected us no matter if you were white black gay chinese european witch voodoo christian like it affected everyone across the board across the world and so as a planet you know we all had something bad happen to us yeah you know what i mean even through life but doesn't mean that it's going to stay like that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And, and don't you think that that should you you it all affected us. It should it did. unite us more. It should definitely We're all unite us not more. separate people. We're people. We're, We're all people. one people. All one people. And, and it should so, unite us to make things better. And yeah. Stuff like so that. like even coming out of this quarantine and pandemic, you know, even locally, you know, people, we should start thinking differently. We should start, you know, saying like, hey, like we both went through this situation. Like now how can we support each other and help each other to get better, to get out of this so we can keep on moving forward. You know what I mean? Because like bad things are not going to stay here. We're not going to always be in the pandemic. You know what I mean? So like now, how is it now? What can we do to make tomorrow better? And so that's why I feel like... 2021 is going to be better because we've already been through something really bad yeah. together. What so now be... together we can come out. All right. If you could, if you had a magic wand right now, like you're Aladdin, you have three wishes. Uh-huh. Give me three wishes. You love Aladdin. Give me three mm-hmm. wishes. If you could change for 2021 to make it, you know, the best year ever. What's the three wishes you go, go to? I would say for the world to lead with love, okay. you know, um, love is a very powerful thing um you know so i feel like leading with love and being surrounded by love two um i wish i could say get rid of all diseases <laughs> you know that'd what i cool. mean like that'd be, that'd be pretty cool would just be like hey like no more diseases let's go Bam. Let's but hey you live. hey you have the genie so you can That's do true. that i can do you that you can, can do that, that ma'am <laughs> you can and then three world peace Miss Congeniality. I got that from Miss Congeniality all the time. World peace. <laughs> Dude, Miss Congeniality is one of the funniest movies I ever. Fucking my mom love loved that movie. My mom yeah. loved that movie too. And that was how I, <laughs> she would watch it all the time. And I would watch with her. Like, yeah, it's pretty fucking funny. It got 20 years. It's been 20 years since that movie came Wait, out. Wait, really? 20 years? Yeah, I'm just like, God, don't we feel. Here's my, so you're, you're a pretty big movie buff too. With mm-hmm. Like you, you love movies. Yeah. Do you think we're just remaking old shit all the time now? And Absolutely. There's never any new things. Where is the originality? Right? Uh, there's like, no where... originality in anything coming out anymore. <laughs> I understand. Like, like, I understand like, all right, we're going to make, hey guys, we're going to make another Ninja Turtle movie. And like my nostalgia as a kid, I'm like, oh, Ninja Turtles. I understand yeah. that. But now mm-hmm. I'm like, they all suck anyway. They so suck. Why do we keep, there's some things. Don't fucking remake touch, it, dude. Like, They're good. Like, I'm all right. So I love Spider Man, right? Now I'm mm-hmm. granted. I'm Tom Holland is the greatest Spider Man ever. Okay. Yeah. Facts. I agree because he definitely reflects the comic books. Yeah. And <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad Spider. But Spider Man gets remade all the fucking time. So you know, at some point, all right, there's gonna be a new Spider Man in a couple years. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a new like the Batman thing is getting a little ridiculous. Oh, it's Granted, getting so tired. I'm talking a lot about superheroes, so there's all this uh, other um, yeah, other, other thing, other options, and other topics and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, as much as I'm look forward to Robert Pattinson's Batman because I love Batman, mm-hmm. I was like, how many Batmans can we have until we make like just a new fucking movie that's good? Facts. And quit exactly. remaking shit. Uh, 
I agree. Like, I think, okay, so like the Spider-Man situation with the multiverse, I feel like it's genius. They definitely saved themselves with that Mm -hmm. because it was too many Spider-Mans. But because they have the multiverse, it definitely ties in everything together. And I think that's very genius. So they got me on that. However, now they're just going to do oh, that with fucking everything, though, too, Nick. I think, I mean, because multiverse is part of the comic know. book. You know, like it is a Spider Man multiverse storyline. So that's Nick where is, they're taking Nick it is, from. A Nick source. is way smarter than I am. I know. Be very clear. <laughs> no. no, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's okay, boo. It's okay, boo. <laughs> Okay, we all boo. learn every single day. We, we all learn, learn every day. day. I learn a lot because everyone's better than I am. It's fucking great. <laughs> so yeah, I get, like I told you, I get smarter people on, so I just get drunk mm-hmm. and I can kind of like just feed off of what they're saying, and that's what I'm mm-hmm. good at. I don't have I good original it, ideas. Dusty's drunken thoughts, y'all. Here we go. Drunk ass. God damn it. All right, you ready? Yeah, got you. All right, first Dusty's Drunken Thought. I was way more of a 98 Degrees fan than I was Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Uh, Really? Yeah, really. (laughs) Yo, you're so disappointed. (laughs) I was always, I was... I was always a mixture of Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. I really didn't give a fuck about 98 Degrees. Because I had like two cousins who was all about Backstreet Boys and then all about NSYNC. So I would always like take a little bit of each of them. So so I just, I thought 98 Degrees was fucking awesome. Really? And I would listen to them all the time. <laughs> fucking give me just one night on See, the I don't no even know chain. any of their songs. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, here's one thing you have to do. After this, you have to go okay. listen to just one. Just look up. Okay, I'll look up my Look up I know one. Nick Lachey was in it. And he's fucking sure. fine. Dude. That boy be singing. Yeah, he can sing. He can he really sing. sing. Now, I was also, but I also, so if I had to rank them, I would have went 98 mm-hmm. Degrees, Backstreet Boys, and Sync. And then, obviously, um, like, Backstreet Boys and Sync were way bigger, but I was always yeah. more of a Backstreet fan than uh, Sync. But I just thought okay. 98 Degrees was always such good singers. I love their songs. Okay, I see. And, and I used to hide their CD when friends came over, because it was like, he like 90 Degrees, degrees. More, like, more like 98 Disease. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, that's fucking impressive. We're like, all right, relax. <laughs> <laughs> relax, motherfucker. Like, you don't have to like it. Dusty's drunk thought number two. Girls that can dance to me are some of, like, the sexiest thing ever. Like, my number one crush is Shakira. Mm. Ooh, I like, love Like, I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but, like, a girl that can dance well, I've always mm-hmm. been just immediately attracted. It's like, probably because yeah. of her hips. You know? Probably because of her hips. They don't, really well. they don't lie. Yeah, they don't lie. They don't lie. They don't fucking lie. Um, to me, I think what's sexy is like when I put my hands around my boyfriend's shoulders. So I love to do that. I love to like rest my hands over the shoulders. You're like, these are good, um, these are good shoulders. Yeah, these are good these, shoulders. You, you broad, you broad. <laughs> you broad, you broad. Um, all right, Dusty Drunk and Thought number three. Um, I don't understand how all these YouTubers, all right, so do you know like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, all this shit? I know, yeah, they know they are familiar. That's is that the one with the Pokemon thing that, that happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Logan Paul yeah, is okay. that guy. Yeah. So all these YouTubers, all these influencers, influencers, I don't understand how they're as big as they are. Now, granted, yeah. I'm obviously not a big deal, but I just don't understand how that happened. And it's not even like a, I don't even I don't have any answer to it. I just don't me understand. Neither. I just and think I, that they just really really like push themselves. To, I don't know, like to really gain those followers. Like yeah. I think there comes a time, there comes a time where you have to like start to mold yourself into something. Yeah. To get to those people that may not like you if you like, you know. It's a, probably a lot of like a lot of people hate you, but they're still watching you. And yeah, like, they're still hey, watching you. you. Hate me now. Exactly. So I don't hey, know. It Paul... all depends. It all depends. I yeah, don't know. I mean, I would love to get to that point, but you know, hey. But yeah, yeah, I just I'm always like dumbfounded. It. Like it's you this whole thing it. with like the boxing and YouTube. Like the YouTube people are boxing people, and mm-hmm. now they're calling out like real. Like I'm a big MMA fan, and like okay. this YouTuber Jake Paul is like calling out Conor McGregor. I'm like, Conor will kill you. He will kill you. <laughs> but it's getting traction because this dude has so many followers, and he's this mm-hmm. big YouTuber and Instagram, whatever it is. It's just fucking crazy to me. Fucking nuts. Don't understand it. <laughs> all right nick i want to thank you for coming on to this podcast i want to thank you for being fucking awesome i want to thank you for 
being a badass being a badass sometimes i lose my train of thought um <laughs> no, it's okay <laughs> thank you for get to, to giving me your time and everything and i've had a i've had a blast talking to you and i want to know what can people follow you on what should they look for out for plug some shit man Got you. Well, first, I want to say thank you so much for providing this space for people to be themselves and to speak, um, especially people like me who, you know, don't just fit in. Um, <laughs> Anyone that says that, I will personally you know, punch them in the throat. Um, <laughs> but no, I really do appreciate um, this platform for me to just speak. I had a great time with you. You're a great host. You're ah, so funny. Thanks, I love oh. talking to you. So This show sucks, dude. This show sucks. <laughs> No, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> but everyone can find me on Instagram at Mr. Nick Luis. Um, Facebook is Nick Luis. Uh, and then what you guys could be looking out for is the play Rough Magic, um, directed by Ashley L. Calderon. And that will be taking place at the New York Weekend Poets Cafe, Zoom, um, along with the collaboration of Blended City. And yeah, that would be Sunday, February 7th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Tickets would be $10 come out to see it it would be fun it'd be great sit back relax bring a cocktail and have some fun boom so, so please boom. follow nick on every all of his stuff he's fucking mm. incredible he's talented as shit again nick thank you uh thank you. and I, it was fucking dope talking to you this is what yeah, you grew. Same. probably get me drunk within two hours later now we'll get me fucked up and i'll be <laughs> shit canned all right everybody thanks for listening peace out drinks on dusty bam yes follow us boom. like us i don't fucking know if you don't want to I don't fucking care, man. Live your life. Peace, y'all. Boom. Bye.